welcome back to JB Breaks Free. I hope you're having a great day, a blessed day, and getting 1% better than yesterday and becoming the best version of yourself that you can be. And every day is a practice, every day is a fresh start, every day we can learn something new, and that's what I'm trying to do and hustle towards my goals. Today's topics that we can get 1% better at are decluttering six areas of your life, 11 money habits that are killing your finances and keeping you trapped, keeping you away from freedom. Um, a couple books that I want to recommend that deal with freeing up your time, and that's really what it's all about. And then actually the song that's been going through my head um, by an artist called Father John Misty, and he talks about in one verse just about buying meaningless objects, and that's really, that hits home for me as I would love to just collect meaningless objects, but at what price? And really it becomes the price of freedom in, in many ways. And I'll talk about that. I think it ties in with a lot of what we can talk about today. I'm so glad to be with you. So glad you're here. I love making these videos and just having the sense of connection and feedback. And I hope they are doing as much for you as, as you do for me. So I really appreciate that. But just getting into it, I think there's some great stuff here. Six areas of your life to declutter for more peace, for more simplicity, for more freedom. And, and at the end of the day, it feels good. It feels good. And I'm feeling all those things right now. And I've been feeling those things most days. And it's, it's just a great, great way to live. And sometimes I don't know if I'm doing enough, but I think this episode will deal with it's okay to not have a busy life, to not strive, 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 but to have time, time and space and freedom. And I hopefully, uh, after this episode, we can have some more of that. But first, uh, of the six areas in your life to declutter for more peace, simplicity, and freedom, first, time clutter. What is wasting your time? It could be different for everybody. It could be too much cable news I freed up so much time cutting out that BS, um, setting boundaries for yourself from people, things, work, saying no more often to situations. Wasting time could be organizing your stuff. Um, I used to have a lot of stuff and I used to spend a lot of time organizing it. And like they say in the movie Fight Club, the stuff that you own ends up owning you. And that's so true and to have time for intentional rest and enjoy the time that you have. So time clutter, free up some space there. Next, physical clutter, a little bit easier to, to see. You know, we could do one thing out or one thing in and one thing out. I like getting rid of one thing on the first day of a month and two things on the second day of a month and three, then four, and see if you can do that challenge to free up space in your home. Clean out your closets, your drawers, old toy bins. Sell, donate, and trash. Depending on what it is that you are getting rid of. Less drunk is less junk is freeing. It's peaceful. Um, it's going to save you money, and it's going to make you love what you have more. And as I've really dialed down and been somewhat ruthless with what brings me joy, the things that I do have, I really get a kick out of uh, my guitar, the items that I buy to resell, the books that I keep. Um, I have a few sports cars that I've invested in, but not collecting for any, any other reason than that. So physical clutter. Number three, relationship clutter. It's a big one for peace of mind. People can drain you if you allow it. Emotional vampires, energy vampires, if they drain you from your peace, from your joy, from your freedom, it's okay to remove them from your life. And I know sometimes this can be with friends. It can be with even family at times. And um, I think perhaps you can validate their existence, but you don't have to approve of what they are doing to themselves or to you. So relationship clutter for sure. Number four, financial clutter. And 
boy, you start taking care of these things, your life is going to be so much freer. Pay off your debt, budget, cancel unused subscriptions, pay yourself first, which is going to be another one of the topics that we're going to bring up next in the 11 things or habits that you're doing to just kill your finances. Pay yourself first. Don't pay yourself last. And use that money to buy time, not stuff. And time is what we want here. We want freedom to have as much time as we can have to ourselves, which is our greatest commodity, our greatest non-renewable resource. And once we have that time, we want to be at peace in that time and to be healthy in that time. So it all plays together. Digital clutter, cut out the mindless scrolling, unfollow negative people from your social media accounts. You won't miss them. Engage with positive people, positive community, which we're building here, and we can rise together. And lastly, of the six areas of your life to declutter, spiritual declutter. I like the phrase, cut the hurry and cut the worry. And use that energy to fill your mind and your body with his word, fill your spirit with the word of God. Find peace, find strength, find courage, find discipline, find joy, find love, and we can rise together. So the six areas of your life, time clutter, physical clutter, relationship clutter, financial clutter, digital clutter, and spiritual clutter. You free up those six areas, and free is the keyword there, underline it, you'll be breaking free real quick. So I hope you enjoyed that first part of the video. And now we shall. The second topic for today's video are 11 money habits that are killing your finances and that are keeping you trapped. And if you're trapped, you're not free. And what we do here is we break free. So check out these 11 habits. See where you're failing. See where you're succeeding. Shore these up and you'll be off to freedom very, very soon. Number one, paying yourself last. Um, paying your debt paying your debts, paying your credit cards, your mortgage, your car payments, that is not gonna bring you financial freedom. Pay yourself first for financial freedom. Minimum of 10% should be going into your savings and into your investments the moment that you get paid. Minimum 10%. I think that's what Dave Ramsey suggests, maybe I think 10 to 15%. Um, you, you take care of your debts. You you. Don't buy stuff. You take care of your consumer debts, your loans, your car payments, your mortgage. You're going to be up saving close to 40, 50, 60% of your money. And watch how free you feel at that point. I put my head down. And in a few years, I did just that. And I feel so, so good. So pay yourself first and start building wealth. Number two, not negotiating your savings, your bills, or your purchases. Ask for a discount ask for a better deal look for a raise negotiating and even leverage can help you in all of those situations number three debt that's just gonna keep you trapped um, I think it says in the Bible the debtor is slave to the lender and that's what we're breaking free from on this channel and you'll feel such a peace of mind attack your debts with everything that you have one great way to find some extra cash to pay for your debts is to declutter, which we talked about in the previous segment. Go through your house ruthlessly. Find what you do not need. Find what doesn't bring you joy, and even if it does at the moment. See what you can sell. Find what extra money you can have and start that debt snowball on your consumer debt, on your car payments, onto your mortgage, and live a debt-free life. Number four is no buffer. Not having a buffer for when emergencies come up. Set up that basic emergency fund of $1,000 for things that are going to happen. And then build it out to three to six months of expenses. And that is such a peace of mind. I think Money Mom says she has nine months. I could be wrong. Maybe it's more. Um, and I bet she'll tell you how much peace of mind that has. And... I can give you freedom of mobility from your job. You can sleep easier at night. Things come up. 
big car things come up, Invisalign braces for the kids, emergencies happen, build up that expense three to six month buffer. Number five, not knowing your income or expenses. I'd like to kick myself for how much I didn't know before I started this journey. And a lot of it seems basic to me now to, to know that, um, to know how much money I make every night from where I work. And my, my pay changes daily because it's just all based on tips, really. Um, and not having lifestyle inflations when you're going to start to have some extra money. That's not the time to keep up with the Joneses. It's the time to just keep building wealth. Know where you stand. Not only did I not know how much I made, not only did we not know how much we spent because we didn't track and now we track everything. And that's where you can find the cuts of what you don't need. I didn't even know how much debt we were in and we were in a lot. And that can be a relationship breaker for a lot of people. And I, maybe with God's grace, he filled me up with strength, with bravery, with courage, with determination, discipline, empathy, comfort, and love. When I found out we were so much in debt, close to 30,000, um, that I didn't even know about in consumer debt. And we made a plan and we fixed it. And we were on the same team and that's huge. And our lives got so much better from that moment. So actually know where you stand. Know your income, know your expenses, and know where you stand if you are in a relationship. Number six, expensive hobbies. And I guess the most expensive hobby would to be shopping in general. But, you know, focus on educational hobbies and, and hobbies that might cost a little bit less money. I know collecting is an expensive hobby in many ways. Um, my hobby has become pursuing freedom, which is kind of fun. My hobby has become side hustling. My hobby has become learning how to make these videos better, um, learning editing, learning guitar, learning songwriting, learning non-traditional ways to make money. That's all kind of a game to me. Gamify life, that can be a fun hobby. I think the best hobby that you can come up with. Uh, number seven is gonna be to only focus on saving. That is only a short-term fix. It's important, but it's not the only goal. I would suggest investing in stocks, bonds, crypto, real estate. Get your money to work for you. Do your own research, but get your money to work because Another thing that's going to kill your savings, number eight, is going to be to ignore inflation. It's going to erode the value of your money over time. Invest in assets, which is a key, the main key, I think, from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is one of the first two books I read on financial freedom, along with The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, and I'll link those videos or those books below in the description. But... Buy assets, not liabilities. I used to think I'm just a waiter. Waiters don't have a good enough job to invest. I'm not good enough to invest. I'm not smart enough to invest. It's too risky. Only my boss can invest. Only people with lots of money can invest. That's not true. I learned through my research, what I'm comfortable with is taking the basically the whole stock market in itself. I think it's VT, VTSAX in in Vanguard, it's the cheapest fund, and you just put money in there. It has the whole stock market. Traditionally, it goes up. There's going to be downs. That's part of life. Um, but over the long haul, it's, it's a big upward curve. Uh, number nine is not having a budget. A budget's going to help you be free because it's going to help you control your spending. It's going to limit your overspending, and it's going to help you reach your financial goals. Number 10, procrastination is going to kill your finances. Don't wait. Start now. The earlier, the better. If, if I could have figured this stuff out 20 years ago, I'd probably just be done. Um, but I have, that's not my journey. My journey is still ongoing. My journey is to inspire people and to continue improving myself. And finally, living beyond your means. And 
keeping up with the Joneses, with the big house, with big cars, with more stuff, with tons of debt, which brings on stress, which is going to trap you. I know plenty of people who make a lot more money than me, who have a much busier life than me, who don't have the time available to them, who hate the spots that they're in, their relationships, their job. They're owned by their stuff and all because of lifestyle inflation. And if they had the courage to take a step back, the awareness, the know-how, the humility to change their lives for the better, to pursue freedom, then they would be much better off and they'd be breaking free like me and you. And the next topic I want to talk about is two kind of underlooked books in the financial freedom, personal development journey, and I will talk to you about those right now. These two books are going to help you reach financial independence and free up your time no matter where you are in your life. Trust me, I was buried in debt and my time was, was not my own. And by pursuing this knowledge, and there's so much more that I want to share, we can figure out our finances and pursue freedom. I will link these books below. The first book is called Take Back Your Time by John DeGroff. And the main message of the book is that time is our most precious commodity in life. And that in America, we have the less free time as any industrialized country in the world. Why is that? Because we work too much for more money to buy stuff we don't need to impress people we don't like or don't care about. There's more to life than eat, sleep, work, and spend time. Time that I have today is so precious to me. Um, I did a little part-time work in the morning. I get to enjoy the rest of the day doing what I want to do. I don't even have to work every night at my main job of waiting tables. and I'm just a waiter. Imagine people making two or three times as much as me taking a step back. Um, you can do this. My wife's a teacher. I'm a waiter in a small town. This can be done. You can pursue your freedom. You can pursue time management to be able to enjoy as much time as you can in your life. And the next book that I want to talk about is Work to Live by Joe Robinson. And the main message of this book is that we don't have enough free time and the main culprit is our jobs. We're just, how many, how many hours a week are we working? This book has tons of actionable tips to help free up your time from your job. And if you declutter those six areas of your life, if you sure up those 11 financial habits that are killing your finances, if you check out these two books, not to mention the Richest Man in Babylon, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and others. Put your time in. Time will start flowing back to you, and you'll be able to do with it as you please within reason and become the best version of yourself. So I'll finish up this video today with a little song by one of my favorite artists that I think kind of ties in to a lot of this stuff. So this is a song by Father John Misty. I've been really enjoying playing on the guitar lately. And it's bored in the USA. It's, it's certainly not free in the USA. And I think this character's life is, is about the opposite of everything that we could hope for and dream for. But it's also a wake-up call about how a lot of people live, unfortunately. And hopefully the people that do will find this channel and break free and start to become the best version of themselves. How many people rise and say My brain's so awfully glad to be here for yet another mindless day Now I've got all morning to obsessively accrue small nation of meaningful objects that gotta represent me too by this afternoon i'll live in death and tomorrow i'll be replaced by children how many people rise 
doesn't think Oh good, the stranger's body's still here Our arrangement hasn't changed Now I've got a lifetime to consider all the ways I've grown more disappointing to you As my beauty warps and fades I suspect you feel the same When I was young I dreamt of a passionate obligation to a roommate Is this the part where I get all I ever wanted Who said that? Can I get my money back? I'm just a little born in the USA just a little born in the USA Save me white Jesus, I'm born in the USA They gave me a useless education A subprime loan On a craftsman home Keep my prescriptions filled Now I can't get off But I can kind of deal With being born in the USA Oh, just a little born in the USA Save me President Jesus, I'm born in the USA